大家好，我叫 Elon， and I'm a Nears co-founder. And today I want to talk about creating without limits. Nears' mission is to remove all barriers to Web3, and the way we measure this mission is with one billion users in first five years goal. To achieve that, we need to be the easiest blockchain. It needs to be simple, it needs to be secure, it needs to be scalable and sustainable. In past year, we had a 30x growth of our user base. It went from less than a million to almost 20 million users, pretty much showcasing the growth of the ecosystem over past year. It's been amazing to see so many new developers coming in and building their projects. Um, Almost 1.5 thousand uh, active developers are cu currently building. We have over 800 projects across near Aurora, Octopus, and kind of sub ecosystems. Almost 10x growth in number of transactions that happened and uh, GVL, and really amazing to see more and more projects getting funded by investors to truly build. Sustainable ecosystem going forward. Now the ecosystem itself has grew tremendously. At the core of it, there's a Nia protocol. Nia protocol is the open source project that powers the nodes as well as defines how the things work. And evolving that, we have a Nia digital collective, the govern the decentralized governance structure that is both defining decisions around the protocol as well as the ecosystem. And uh, this is currently in the works and uh, I'm inviting everyone to participate. At the same time, there's a number of infrastructure players and projects, everything from indexes and oracles, RPCs and analytics, EVM and different programming languages you can build with, sidechain and private shards. Also important to highlight is not just kind of the basic infrastructure, it's also the application infrastructure like Aurora Plus, which allows to give users free transactions on and off ramps, ability to create shielded transactions and remote accounts, which I'll mention in the future. Overall, the ecosystem is not just scaling through infrastructure. There's a lot of different funding and regional nodes that are in the ecosystem. But at the end, it's all about the apps. And it's really amazing to see applications across the board, but specifically we see focus around finance, which is everything from connecting to traditional finance, creating different financial tools and uh, pushing beyond kind of what's possible with traditional finance, creative side, NFTs, marketplaces, NFT projects, ability to create marketing instruments and tools, as well as music, audio, video, text, social networks. And, and in social, it's kind of amazing to see a huge growth across blog, content, images, and more. Overall, this is kind of how we see the three fundamental pillars of applications are the way the growth of the ecosystem is going to continue. Because as more creators are coming, they're creating more content, they have more places to socialize to social networks that in turn, you know, more DAOs, more kind of value captured, which then turns into financial tools and then finances attract more creators. And so kind of that's a positive flywheel that is happening already on the ecosystem. Now it's all good, but it still feels small, but actually mass adoption is here. The Sweatcoin has launched September 13th, and they have already brought you know, over 13 million users on chain. They have 2 million active, 200,000 users already staked their tokens. This is an amazing feat. This is the mass adoption. They have 120 million installs of their main app. And it's amazing to see how the kind of truly simple experiences that can onboard actual billion people are built already on near. The reason why it's possible is because near infrastructure has been from the start designed to be removing the limits that usually people have. Parallelization, running things in parallel, 
is the only viable scaling solution. There are a few different options how this can be done and kind of a lot of different uh, other alternative solutions have chose to separate layers, to have different layers responsible for kind of consensus and data availability and for execution. What this ends up leading to is dropping the overall performance, adding latency and general worse UX. The integrated blockchain, which is designed to isolate components, but is integrated from the user and developer perspective is what outperforms both on performance and latency as well as on a better UX. That's what NEO's design from the start has been. How do we hide the complexity of the blockchain from the user, deliver them the same experience as if the blockchain was singular and under the hood run things in parallel? Now, there's been a long time coming to, and there's still more things to go. Last year, I have showcased we have went from zero from one shard to four shards, and without changing any of the user experience, uh, that went really smooth. And now we're launching transition from uh, adding more chunk only uh, validators, so going from 100 to 300 validators, and then scaling beyond that. And so this is a pretty big release, there's been you know, multiple months of stake wars of incentivized testnet happening, kind of uh, coalescing the whole community around it. And it allows to both continue decentralizing and uh, lay on the ground for the next step, which is a eliminating need for uh, block producers who are validating all shards, uh, which is going to be coming in next year. The dynamic resharding, the end goal that we're um, aiming at is this idea that instead of Kind of needing to figure out, oh, do I need my own chain, or do uh, do I not? My application is not going to justify that. The blockchain itself will figure this out. Right now, actually, Aurora specifically runs on dedicated shard because it does qualify for uh, enough, like needing enough capacity, and then the rest applications are split between three uh, kind of physical shards. Now, this process of um, Kind of assigning to shards right now is done through a governance process. And so that requires uh, kind of you know manual work uh, by the community. What dynamic resharding will bring is this idea of dynamically assessing which applications need which capacity and expanding or uh, contracting the network, the physical number of shards on the network. This is pretty unique. This is what truly will enable kind of go without limits uh, across the ecosystem. Now, that's a base infrastructure, but on top of it, it was designed to be, Near was designed to be something that's built without limits. It's a flexible account model. If you're not familiar with Near's account model, check it out. It allows everything from, you know, having multiple devices connected with different keys to the same account, giving dedicated permissions to specific applications to do things on your behalf, ability to have a del delayed recovery keys, ability to give a single use private key and more. Now that enables a progressive security, is ability to kind of start with maybe less secure setup and then over time rotate keys, change them, add new security, do 2FA, maybe have multi-sig in the same account. Don't need to move your assets, don't need to change anything. Of course, it's been a lot about developer tooling, enabling kind of a whole host of tools uh, to do that. Solidity, JavaScript, Rust, we've been focused on how do we enable the common languages that people want to build on and specifically JavaScript on, on the ecosystem. We can customize the onboarding, the kind of a lot of new ways of how the Onboarding can be done in such a way that user has the least barriers to entry. And one of the things that being kind of under, under the radar, but you actually can package your front end directly into smart contract, making application fully served from the chain without having to have a centralized service, which is pretty important both for security and for decentralization. Now, there's a number of things that come in the future. Meta transactions is one of the things that is in progress already enabling to really easily pay for other people's transactions, this be an application or things like Aurora Plus, ability to directly buy assets while you're transacting, right? Normally, 
people are not used to when you're buying something and on a marketplace to pay first to top up your account and then and then buy on the marketplace why don't we enable directly when you're buying an nft or something on any other marketplace if you don't have enough assets it will pop up you to on ramp into the system remote accounts is the idea that we can bring your accounts from other chains on near very smoothly you will not need to set up a near wallet to start using your applications and then very naturally will transition to near as you actually have a lot more uh, capability there and it will actually save you a lot of fees uh, for developers so there's already launching kind of a first version with pagoda but uh, a lot more will be how do you take on existing applications just fork and launch it and then iterate on it especially when you package front end and smart contract together, this creates a insane amount of uh, flexibility for developers to play with. Advanced in security. Users are afraid of seed phrases. Developers are afraid of launching their smart contracts, creating secure uh, sandboxes, limiting how much money can be stolen if something is going wrong, creating an insurance and monitoring network that is enabling both users and developers to feel safer. And UX templates. It's really cumbersome right now because every app has its own set of UX primitives. Why don't we have a set of templates that everybody can use that are familiar to users that are enabling users to do common things across all applications? So here's an example of using actually a single use private key that is loaded up with NFT and allows you to create an account, a named account, and then claim an NFT. This is pretty much the idea that uh, you can program a single use private key for any set of operations and then share it with a friend through instant messenger, email, or any other means of communication and allow them to kind of execute set of actions um, on their behalf. This is pretty unique functionality that doesn't exist anywhere. And it's one of the best ways to onboard new users. So I mentioned there's a lot of tooling. Uh, just to mention a few, there's uh, RPC providers like Pagoda and Fura, there's CLIs and wallet selectors. There's a lot of data uh, frameworks that allow you to actually read data at scale. Pagoda is providing a number of analytics triggers and lots more tooling. And there's a lot of certification and education available across new university and academy. Now, specifically to start by on JavaScript. So JavaScript is the programming language that has 20 million developers globally. And this is the first time you can actually build pretty much un, um, unrestricted JavaScript code and launch it on chain. This is enabled by running a JavaScript VM directly on chain, which is very unique and impossible to do on any other blockchain. So here's an example of you just getting started with Nier and set up your JavaScript project. And it's pretty much just a smart contract in JavaScript. And you can just say yarn deploy, it gets it on testnet. And you can say yarn start to get uh, the front end running. So this is 15 seconds and you have a full app running on blockchain and with a front end that you can interact with. Now, obviously beyond this, there's interoperability I mentioned. Uh, EVM, I mentioned sidechains, Aurora is providing the EVM, Octopus is providing sidechain functionality, and Rainbow at the center with a lot of other bridges now connecting the ecosystem with everything else. Beyond that, AstroDAO is allowing to create flexible organizations. Obviously DAOs have some uh, conception, but actually you can set up anything you want from a regular company to a fully kind of on-chain, uh, organization or a group or number number of different configurations. This is truly to enable new ways of collaborating and creating projects across the ecosystem. Switching gears, it's not about tooling per se, it's also about the ecosystem development. And NIR has been focused on funding the ecosystem across the board. Last year, we have committed $800 million to invest across the ecosystem development uh, which is split into four major buckets. It's foundation grants, it's uh, startup grants, it's DeFi, through proximity, and regional hubs. 
just to mention ecosystem funds, this has been a kind of proliferation of different vertical uh, funds, which are focused on different aspects of the kind of developer ecosystem. And spe specifically, it's DeFi, gaming, creator economy, uh, now setting up sustainability, as well as more general uh, funds like MegaVeb, which is investing across the board. And one thing to announce is we are doubling down on sports and entertainment fund, which will be a hundred million fund run by Mason Pillai, who is coming from the, the sports and entertainment uh, industry, really bring together this uh, kind of amazing talent that exists in that space on chain. In parallel, we've been truly trying to be rigid, kind of uh, evolving across the whole globe. To be global, we need to be local and we've, kind of been uh, setting up hubs which are uh, focused on local markets. Specifically to mention hubs like Ukraine and Balkans and Kenya, which have been active for a while, and India and Vietnam, which has been just announced, uh, which are quickly evolving. The hub is everything across the talent, business development, the grants, as well as VC and product lab kind of developing new projects and investing in these projects in the ecosystem. This enables to have a local presence of near in all of these locations and truly connect with the local developers and entrepreneurs and the and the community. Near is about being without limits. It's about building without limits so you can have ch choice of programming language you want and environment you want. It's about scaling without limits, without needing to be held back by costs and speed of the blockchain by uh, and truly knowing that your application will scale as the users come. And it's about using without limits, having a flexible account model, knowing that it allows you to continue being easily to be secure, simple to create is really what we're striving for. So create without limits. I urge everyone to uh, come in, to build, to use, to give feedback, to contribute to projects, to have truly the Creativity of Web3. Realized. Thank you. I'm Ilya and check out on near the dark latest news.